I'm Damon from Joy. I'm here today to talk you through some of the features, benefits and fitments of the Joy Every Stage FX. So this seat will do you all the way through, from birth all the way through to 12 years old. So it really is the only one you'd ever need. So that's from birth through to 36 kilograms as the upper weight limit. So if I start off on the product by showing you its group one and group zero mode, which can be utilized in the rearwards facing uh, direction with the seat belt. So harness wise and adjustments, etc. You've got a little Velcro strap on the end of there to keep it nice and neat. It doesn't have to be used, of course. You can leave that down. Um, but if we start off on there. Now for rearward facing mode, we will always utilize the blue markings. So we have two positions available to us. So we align the arrow with either position five or position six. Position six, so I tend to always use for a newborn, um, but as the children get older, say at three, four years old, you might find that they want to sit slightly more upright, so of course you can select position five. So start off in position six, and to operate your recline, there's a simple lever at the front there that moves it on the base system. So again, ensure it's aligned with the arrows. What we've then got to do is locate the seat belt. So we need to first of all, pull out the harness, so depress the button in the centre which is hiding through a little hole here, pull below the shoulder pads, get your finger below those and always pull forwards and downwards. So the reason we don't pull on the pads themselves is they are connected so they remain in the correct position at all times. But the belt will feed from the top. As we've brought that forwards then we can unclip the harness. Now we don't need to fully remove this insert, we can just move it around the harness like so and just twist it around um, position wise still on the crotch pad section there. That will give us access then that as we locate the seat into the vehicle, of course in the rearwards facing direction, enables us then the clear belt path that we require to fit the seat belt through. Best routine when fitting these is to pull the tongue section up to the roof of a vehicle. As we lift that to there, it ensures that the lap belt isn't twisted at all and also gives us sufficient length that we can feed the belt over and through the guides and clip straight into the buckle. So that keeps it straight through the path over there. As we then pull the diagonal seat belt out and around, we'll go round the back of the seat, underneath the top tether section, going through the lower lower belt guide and coming back up through the upper belt guide. Now this is also a lock device. Now before we do lock the seat belt here, what we need to ensure is that we've got sufficient tension on the seat itself. So it's best sometimes to get a bit of weight onto the seat, so we can just lean on the seat itself, ensuring that the base remains flat as we do so. So pull through on the lap belt so we get it all the slack away from the beginning of the seat belt and then just gradually feed that slack back up and through the diagonal seat belt. As we get that tension up at the top here, it enables us then to keep it flat and close the clasp straight onto the seat belt there. So it's keeping all the tension in there. Now, as we look at the beginning of the seat, this is the important section here. If it's tight enough here, hear the noise there we can flick it and make a tune whatever tune you want to play but if that bit's tight we know then the rest of the seat belt around the seat is also perfectly tight so that's very important check also pop out your side impact protection it's only needed on the door side you can pop them both out if you like them symmetrical but it's more important on the door side itself now once we've got the seat installed like so, we can then look at getting it ready for the child again. So again, we can just twist that around, positioning wise, then move the harness. So we've got the harness, so that's then around the actual insert itself. And like so. It's now ready for use. Get the tongs back up. Make sure that we've got no twists in there, so we can make sure we've got that through, like so. And that's now, of course, ready for a newborn child to pop straight in there. Loading the child always make the harness nice and long, and we can move those out of the way like so, thus, so that we're ready to load the child in and out of the vehicle. If we are struggling with space, depending on the vehicle and the height here, a little tip, we can actually tuck that underneath there temporarily. So we can do that while we're loading the child into the actual seat itself. We can then, of course, mate the harnesses together so they just interlock ever so slightly, 
pinch it at the top enables us to clip it into the buckle system itself. As we've clipped it in, key importance is ensuring we've got the slack away from the lap belt area and jeans or whatever clothing they're wearing. So pulling up here and then we can pull on the harness section. Always pull this straight. So as we pull that straight, it keeps the least amount of resistance on the strap system itself. If we are struggling to get the tension at any point, you can always rest on the seat to pull to get a bit of extra leverage. But what we're looking for is two fingers flat on top of the child's shoulders and only be able to wiggle slightly. If we can lift and make a loop, it's not tight enough. If we can't get them under, it's a little bit too tight, but much better to be too tight than too loose. So that's then ready from the child's perspective. But if we have used this little tip, we must remember to pop that diagonal belt so it's sitting over the top of the side impact protection and we're then ready for the road in the rear facing mode. Now, say this can be used from birth in the position and setup that we've got it here, but also as the child gradually grows, we're able to expand the headrest without reinstalling the seat. We can simply depress that button at the top there to start moving the headrest up to different heights. The insert is a three-stage progressive insert. So with regards to the insert, normally the head section would be the first part to come out. So this would be removed somewhere around about three to six months, maybe a little bit longer depending on the child's size. The body section again can remain in as long as needed, but would tend to come out somewhere around about nine months to maybe a year. And you'll find that is attached to another wedge system. So that can be removed there like so. Now, the main thing that is mandatory really with the insert is it must all be used to around about six months. After that, it's optional, so it depends what suits for the different child size. But the idea of this wedge is it's helping to keep a child in a more laid flat position. So until their neck strength gets strong enough that they can sit there um, and sleep in a comfortable position, we can use this wedge. So maybe around about 12 months to 15 months if necessary. At that point that can come out and we're ready to use the seat on its own. The top section will fold down dependent on the height position we've got to keep the most maximum amount of comfort for the child and of course continue to grow as that child does as well and we can utilize the harness without the insert in exactly the same manner so extend it to make the child uh, bigger for the child but then always pull up here pull the harness tight double check if necessary readjust the tension and we're ready to go and then as we come back to get them out below the pads finger on both pull forwards and downwards to make it longer we can then eject the harness and move the harness out the way ready to get the child out etc now say this can be used right the way through in this mode all the way through to 18 kilograms and continue to grow as required for that child's size um, if we were readjusting between position six and five at any point, then we would need to readjust the tension on the seat belt. So just simply release that section. We can then gain access to the recline to adjust in position five, recite it, retension. So pull all the slack back through and feed that back up into the locker at the top, like so. so exactly the same, do the flick check. And the best routine with this flick check is to get into that habit. Load the child, sort the child, flick it. If it's flickable, you know it's safe for that journey. If somebody, heaven forbid, has depressed that button in error of a night, nothing looks really any different as you approach the car and potentially you could load the child in without realizing. If you go to do your flick check straight away, you know something drastic has happened and importantly, you know that before you set off for that journey. So please do make that a, uh, a creature of habit of checking that on a daily basis. Now, say we can use this all the way through to 18 kilos in the rearward facing mode, but we can also, if we so desire, fit the seat forwards facing in the group one mode. So if we are fitting it in forward facing mode, we will align the arrows with the red positions. So we can use any of those four positions uh, dependent on the uh, child's desires, driving styles, etc. Um, I'll show you quickly in one position, but it's the same installation in any. So we can use vehicle seatbelt or Isofix and top tether. So I'll show you both of those installation methods. Now, if we're installing using the vehicle seatbelt, it is best to do it with the harness loose. Again, if we use the seatbelt through to the roof of the vehicle, it gives us a good length again. And the seatbelt is going to pass 
through this aperture here. Now it's best just to start feeding the seat belt through, so only just place it slightly through, because as we do that, we can then lift the seat fabric here to gain access at the back. So as we pass that through, we can very easily get hold of it by a hand. Because we've got the right amount of seat belt and we know that it's not twisted, we can go straight on through the back with confidence to come out the other side, feed through any additional slack that is required to then clip it in to the buckle. Um, ensure that the lap belt on both sides is down in this little area here. The diagonal belt will take its natural position as it feeds back up and if necessary put weight on the seat. So sometimes people will find it easier to install on uh, seat belt mode using body weight but just ensure that as we're putting the body weight on we aren't pulling the seat away from the backrest of the seat. So if we do do that we'll force the weight onto the seat itself whilst pulling the slack out of the lap belt section. Transfer that tension from one side to the other side and on this side of the seat then we have the locking device. So we can simply open this up, slide the belt in, lock that back down. That's a one way gripper, so once it's in, it's in. And do the magic flick test to ensure that it's installed correctly and tightly. Um, harness routine remains exactly the same as using it for a rearward facing seat, so no difference there. We can make those together, clip that in, adjust accordingly to ensure it's correctly fitted for the child. Of course, getting the child out below the pads, forwards and downwards, open it all up, get those out of the way, and it's ready for the child to, of course, go back in again. So really, really nice and straightforward. Um, from the routine-wise, um, again, please try and get into that habit of checking it and ensure that we have the side impact pod out on the door side um, before we set off. So that's your belted mode for group one. So that's from nine to 18 kilograms. We can use it using the seat belts but also from nine to 18 kilograms in the forward facing direction. We can also utilize it in the Isofix mode. Now, if we're using it in the Isofix mode, we will use this top tether system. So you'll find in this little bag here, we have copious amounts of additional belt um, that will allow us to fit in the various different positions that top tethers can be found in cars. On our demonstration rig, the top tether point is right down at the very bottom, so we'll need quite a, a length of seat belt here to connect in, centralize the clip so it's into the middle, and you'll find on the top tether we have an indicator. As we install this and get this tight enough, you'll see as we're putting the pressure on, it will start to go green. So green is good to go, and red, of course, we still need to get more tension on. Now, installing the lower parts are critical. So to extend those, there is a button right at the very front here. We'll pull out on that button, and at the same time, extend the Isofix itself. Bring those out to the absolute maximum, but before we clip them in, ensure our top tether is in the correct position. So dependent on vehicle, it will either go around the outside of a headrest or through the center. Sometimes it's even better just to remove the vehicle headrest just for, for ease anyway. But installation wise, once we've extended the Isovix to the maximum position, we can clip it into the car, ensuring that both sides are fully engaged by pulling forwards. And then we need to tether the uh, tension, the top tether strap. So tension in the top tether strap, of course, first we need to locate it onto the top tether and then equalize the tension. If we only tighten from one side, we'll only tighten one side of the V-shaped strap. So start by pulling on the opposite side and feed that slack through the actual webbing itself. As we're feeding that through, as we start to pull the tension then, you'll see that we keep and maintain the tension on both sides so that then once it's tight, it remains tight and you'll see the opposite side is also nice and taut as well. So very, very easy to keep the tension and move that through if you fed it through the clip itself. Once that's in then, that's in and ready to go. But if we do adjust through any of the different reclined positions, dependent on vehicle, you might find that that adjusts the tension on the top tether strap. Okay, so in some cars we're going to need to adjust that and also adjust the recline position of the Isofix itself. So as we've sat that up, we've lost contact with the back of the seat, 
So we need to operate that button there to slide the seat back so we're gaining contact up at the top as well. So easy enough to do and can all be done even if the child was in there. We then need to again equalise that pressure so we're pulling the slack through before we tighten the top tether to again gain the green. Okay, so quite straightforward and easy once you know the routine and the principles with it. Harness remains the same as what we've seen utilising it in the forward facing. So belted or isofix and top tether on forwards facing from 9 to 18 kilos. So approximately a year through to four years we could use either of those two modes if we desire. After this point we can start to use it as a high back booster seat. Now we can start to use the seat as a high back booster from 15 kilograms. Ideally try and keep the children in the harness driven element until at least 18 kilos if possible. Um, but anywhere from 15 we have got that as an option to then start to use it then forwards facing. Now with regards to uh, the usage, the product can be used of course in booster seat mode without its harness. Now the clever thing with the uh, Every stage FX is the fact that the harness hides away. We never take the critical safety equipment off the product. So we can undo these two press studs here, lift the flap up on the headrest as you saw there. These harness pads then will simply drop straight into those lovely little holders there. So very, very quick and easy to do. Very nice and neat, like so. The crotch buckle here will be fed through the seat cover. And underneath here is a little storage compartment. So lift the lid on the storage compartment allows the buckle to drop straight in place like so. Reconnect your press studs here and here. Drop that back down and we are now ready as a booster. So you might be thinking why have I left this part in there? Well the great thing with the Every Stage FX is we've created a fourth point of contact using this pad. So you'll pull this flap forwards which can then velcro of course in place. And the beauty and use of this is when we're using it with the vehicle seat belt. So we place the child in there, they've just come from a five point harness system and we can still use this to feed the lap belt under. Now the benefit of that being is that it's giving that child the same feeling of security as to what they did have and also helping to reduce some loading. Now diagonal belt will just slide through the top here and into the guide. That's done and of course say as the child's in here with this fourth point of contact their legs are coming from underneath here it's giving them both abdominal support and comfort as well as additional security. Now it can be used in this mode using the ISO safe lower connection so we can keep that in place which helps keep the seat nice and stable. We can utilise any of the four recline positions so if we're going to recline it we need to slide the seat further out to be able to then adjust position and always ensuring that we've got contact at the top of the seat. Quite often in cars you'll find you need to remove the vehicle headrest so that we're not getting unnatural contact there. Um, and this fourth point of contact can be used for as long as necessary. So it can be used all the way through to 12 if really desired, but at any point we can open the flap and undo the Velcro at the bottom here to remove that point to use it as a more traditional style booster seat with the belt going through. So as we feed the belts through, we need to ensure as the child's in that the lap belts are down in this little trough area and the diagonal belt is also coming from that point, which will ensure as to whatever height the child is, the belt is always guided through the centre of the chest and the side of the child's shoulder. Now, if we are using the every stage effects without the lower ISO safe connections in place, so simply eject those, no problem. Use the front lever to fully store the ISO safe connections. Once we've done that, we'll just, of course, use the vehicle seat belt as the primary method of attachment. So we would be attaching both the seat and the child in using the vehicle seat belt, like so. Hey Preston, again, I just saw the belt to the correct positions as the child grows and moves. You'll see we have width expansion on the product. So as we go through from lower positions, as the child's shoulders gradually grow in width, so does the seat. So it does grow with the child really, really comfortably and easily. And importantly here is 
if we're using any booster seat, whether it's this one or another, and we haven't got ISO safe connections, when we drop a child off at school or wherever we've gone, we would tend to just do that to get the child out. If we leave it like this in the vehicle, this becomes the most dangerous thing in the car because in the event of a collision, this whole seat will break forwards and cause potential injuries to others in the vehicle. So if we are not using the ISO safe connection, remember as we drop the child off at school, just to drop the seatbelt back over it to keep the other adults in the vehicle nice and safe when there's no child in there. Okay, so thank you for listening today. Hopefully that's been a help. Uh, if you do need any further assistance, then please let us know and we'll be glad to help. Thank you very much.